Greetings. This talk is going to, uh, to discuss how ARM and SUSE are collaborating in building a sustainable cloud to edge infrastructure. So uh, an outline for this presentation, I will do a, a brief introduction, talk about ARM and Neoverse, talk about some of the standards and collaboration ARM and SUSE uh, participated in, and then uh, outline some of the SUSE products uh, on ARM and how we've contributed architecture support into, uh, into these, and some deployment and use case we've done at ARM on deploying SUSE products on our own ARM infra ARM based infrastructure as part of our transition to a cloud native uh, environment. And then I will conclude with uh, uh, pointers on uh, ecosystem and, and resource available for uh, developers and companies to, uh, to run and experiment running workloads on, on ARM platforms. So um, uh, introduction, uh, my name is uh, Philippe Robin. I am director of open source, part of the infrastructure line of business at ARM. I joined the company in 1999 and key focus areas have been operating system and distributed systems. I started working on microkernels and, and real-time operating system before focusing on Linux and open source, starting from Linux 2.4 kernel series. And as open source uh, adoption grew through the, um, throughout the ecosystem and, and developer uh, community, I uh, collaborated with partners to launch uh, Linaro as an organization to, uh, to enable collaboration on ARM developments and contributing uh, support and optimization upstream in projects. That included Linux kernel development tools, as well as uh, a very varied mix of projects where we could contribute some optimization. More recently, I focused on infrastructure and cloud native uh, ecosystem. I've been a member of the board of a number of organizations, including Confidential Computing Consortium, DPDK, and uh, Cloud Native Computing Foundation, where I was an alternate board member. So ARM as a company has had an, a number of focused areas, and, and particularly since the very beginning, we focused on, on designing IP and enabling platforms for lower carbon footprint and, and low energy consumption. That was particularly critical as we initially targeted mobile and embedded platforms and then continued to focus on this uh, as we expanded into, uh, into additional segments um, like uh, automotive and, and IoT, for example. Uh, doing so, we've developed a rich ecosystem of uh, hardware and software uh, partners. So uh, we have a, a very large uh, uh, mix of hardware um, partners developing platforms running on ARM and, uh, and a very extensive mix of uh, software solutions and software projects that, that are available from our partners and running on ARM. We focused on, on efficient compute performance and delivering speed, bandwidth, and, and low latency. So comfort performance has been, uh, has been a, a, key, a, a key criteria we, are, we always uh, focus on as we develop new generation of IP. And we've done this in, in collaboration with partners and the community, enabling open standards and where necessary, develop new standards that partners and ARM can collaborate on so developers and companies have a choice of uh, platforms and, and environment they can they can develop on. And ARM technology has been defining the, the, the future of computing. ARM is a semiconductor design and software platform company. And to date, we have uh, over 250 billion ARM-based chips, which uh, have been shipped. And we have a growing list of licenses uh, uh, using ARM uh, intellectual property for building platforms and this list is growing by at least 15 new licenses per year. Our technology securely powers products from sensors to smartphones and to, uh, to supercomputers. And ARM provides an enhanced system level security technology such as ARM Trust Zone and ARM Confidential Compute Architecture or CCA which is part of the ARM V9 uh, architecture. And together with partners, we're redefining what's, uh, uh, what's possible in cloud computing. Compute is, has been undergoing a seismic shift the recent years. 
it's increasingly specialized and we're improving efficiency and reducing power consumption while increasing performance, which is critical to compute providers. Arm Neoverse is delivering innovation at a rapid pace into infrastructure markets while leveraging a broader set of power performance and area design points when developing infrastructure class cores. So combined with leading fabric solutions such as uh, CXL or CCIX and ARM IP, ARM partners can develop efficient accelerated solutions spanning cloud to edge. All of this resulted in all major cloud service providers offering ARM-based instances and ARM is gaining, has been gaining significant traction in HPC, the high performance market, um, with partners such as Fujitsu, Cray, NVIDIA and Marvel, and I would note the ARM-based Fugaku supercomputer has achieved the world number one in supercomputer ranking for four, four years in four times in a row. And clouds everywhere are deploying ARM-based uh, solutions. Uh, Neoverse is now available in all the major public clouds. That includes AWS, Google Cloud, Microsoft Azure, and Tencent, for example. And today, every developer across the world can get access to a, to a, a modern cloud-based solution based on ARM. So the partners designing platforms uh, on, built on ARM include uh, companies like Ampere Computing with Ampere Ultra and Ultra Max uh, pro micro, um, processors. These provide predictable high performance. They, uh, they are built on ARM Neoverse N1 cores and run up to 3 gigahertz uh, uh, frequency. They provide high scalability with up to 128 cores per socket. Uh, includes 128 lanes PCIe Gen 4 per CPU and provide a power efficiency with uh, higher performance per watt uh, using traditional benchmarks to compare them to uh, two existing uh, uh, competing solutions. HPE, um, Hewlett Packard Enterprise has been the first major service provider to deliver a, a new line of uh, cloud native compute solutions using microprocessors from Ampere. The new HPE solutions provide an agile, extensible, and trusted compute foundation to drive innovation. The new HPE ProLiant RL300 Generation 11 server is the first in a series of servers that deliver next generation compute performance with higher power efficiency and using Ampere Ultra and Ultra Max cloud native processors. And as I mentioned, uh, major cloud service providers are, are now providing ARM based solutions. That includes Microsoft, which launched a public preview of Azure virtual machine based on Ampere Ultra ARM based uh, server CPUs. So these uh, provide up to 64 virtual CPUs and operating at 3 gigahertz. They are based on ARM Neoverse N1 cores and provide up to 40 gigabit per second enhanced networking and optional high performance local SSD storage. So they, they increase performance by up to 50% compared to uh, comparable x86 instances. And you have the names of the uh, virtual machine series, which uh, are available on Azure on, on the right hand side of, uh, of this slide. Google introduced uh, ARM based virtual machine instances as well. So these are based on the uh, uh, T2A tool family, uh, which is optimized for price performance. Uh, they provide a, a, a rich choice of, uh, of a software ecosystem, including a major operating system like SUSE, which are available on these instances. This family offers up to 48 virtual CPUs with uh, uh, um, up to 32 gigabit second uh, uh, associated with this. And of course, as, as uh, usual with Google, all the major databases and language are available, whether it's OpenJDK, Python, Go, or Erlang as well as a uh, uh, um, popular database framework, MySQL, Cassandra, MongoDB, and, and some of the uh, web frameworks and, and uh, other applications available as part of that as well. 
Amazon with AWS Graviton has also been generally available with Graviton 3. Uh, Graviton 3 is based on Neoverse V1, which is optimized for performance. And that powers the new C7G instance family, which delivers best price performance for compute intensive workloads like HPC, uh, high performance computing, EDA, and machine learning. Performance is optimized for compute intensive codes, uh, providing twice the floating point performance uh, compared to what you, 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 you could get on uh, Graviton 2 uh, today, and making use of scalable vector extension support. Provide up to 50% memory bandwidth with uh, DDR5, again, compared to our Graviton 2 uh, instances, and three times the performance for machine learning workloads, uh, making use of BFLOAD 16 instructions. So all of these to provide a, a greener compute solution, which uses 60% uh, less energy compared to our, uh, our similar EC2 instances available today. So as I said, ARM and SUSE have been collaborating on, on building SaaS standards, also collaborating on, on enabling ARM architecture upstream, as well as in SUSE products. So uh, we, are, we collaborate upstream in, in reviewing uh, patches and, and new developments as part of the community process, but also we're partici participating in the open SUSE development process and reviewing with the open SUSE community uh, these new features and validating these as part of OBS and the infrastructure before these are adopted and, and made available into uh, SUSE latest products. SUSE has been participating in standard initiatives and certification. I would name here uh, System Ready as a compliance uh, framework to uh, hardware and firmware standards. So providing a base level that uh, platform providers need to comply with so our software can run seamlessly between platforms. Uh, the platform security architecture certification where SLI Micro uh, uh, was granted um, PSA certification with a 5.2 release earlier this year. And SOFI has a scalable open architecture for embedded edge. And SUSE is, uh, is a member of the governing board on SOFI, and I will, I will expand on, on the framework and the architecture of SOFI in the, in the next slide. So SOFI is, uh, is a framework and reference implementation for cloud native, uh, cloud -native uh, framework. Um, SOFI architecture runs on system ready hardware, and the light blue um, boxes uh, are provide pieces which are both in vehicle and in the cloud. Software portability is helped by using container technology and the orchestration is used to bring containerized workloads from the cloud to the vehicle. The same workloads can be both developed and run in a cloud instance and taking advantage of environmental parity between cloud and edge and which can help speed up the development process. And the list of products available on ARM from SUSE has been, has been growing over years. So uh, that includes SLE 15, SLE 15 and SLE 12 have been available for a long time now, starting from Raspberry Pi when SUSE uh, was the first company to, uh, to have a commercially available product on, on, on ARM with Raspberry Pi. SLE 15 enables the latest ARM features and is used to securely deploy business critical workloads in uh, cloud and at the edge. SLI Micro with 5.4 is also available as part of SUSE Edge 2.0 solution. Uh, it's uh, primarily used to run cloud native workloads at the edge, enabling SUSE adaptive telco infrastructure platform, and also making use of uh, Kubernetes and Linux OS lifecycle management features. K3S as a lightweight Kubernetes distribution has been available for, for a long time now with Rancher. Uh, and it can be used to deploy workloads across resource constrained platforms from edge to IoT platforms. And for storage solutions, Longhorn added support for ARM64 late uh, 2022 as part of the 1.4 release and provide a cloud native distributed block storage solution for Kubernetes. 
applying this to uh, to real use cases. And you will have more uh, talks from my colleagues at Susecon who will uh, who discuss that in, in greater details. We've been uh, on a mission at ARM to, uh, to use uh, ARM-based infrastructure and running ARM on ARM. So that means uh, having internally uh, making use of ARM, uh, ARM-based platforms, as well as uh, be able to run workloads into uh, cloud uh, instances providing ARM uh, with ARM-based platforms. So as part of this, we, um, we, um, we want to be able to deploy workloads on, on uh, multiple cloud uh, providers uh, and uh, also using multiple architecture. That includes AWS, Azure, Google Cloud, and Alibaba, for example. And, and we also want to, uh, we're also looking at uh, running workloads internally and, and use it, so using SUSE products for doing so. So that includes using Rancher, using Fleet, and using, um, using other products. We, um, security is, is, uh, is critical as part of our own deployments and the lifecycle uh, uh, management. So we've been using uh, uh, Noi Vector and, and experimenting with Noi Vector and, and contributing support for ARM64 as part of this experimentation. And also use, looking at using SUSE Manager for, for managing these deployments and, and the resource we are, we, are, we are deploying. And all of this running on SUSE Enterprise Linux, of course. So where we are in our transition to the cloud and status of our deployment. So today we've been using our K3S and, and Fleet and SUSE Enterprise Linux as part of the internal deployment. And that's been run on, on ARM-based platforms as part of a uh, number of workloads we are, we are deploying. We're also uh, developing, um, developing solutions uh, using Harvester and using NoiVector. So that's still work uh, in development. And um, we select ranchers for node and cluster drivers, uh, contributing ARM64 support to new vector project as part of our uh, testing we're doing internally. And uh, we have a local harvest build that we've been deploying as well internally. So all of these to really uh, validate and test uh, SUSE products on our own ARM infrastructure and testing ARM64 support as part of this. Contributing back to SUSE so that this can be integrated into product offering. And longer term, the, the desire, desired goal is to, uh, to have a full rancher release, which supports applications that we can deploy and manage uh, using SUSE Manager as part of the, uh, the overall solution. So it's work in progress. We've started this a couple of years ago in, in uh, our part of our transition to a cloud native infrastructure. And, in, and slowly um, bringing in uh, different solutions and having a choice of uh, in-house as well as cloud service uh, uh, provider where some of the workloads are being uh, being hosted. So we're also collaborating with a broader ecosystem. And again, the, the, the key focus areas as part of uh, our, our journey has been on focus on focusing on performance, providing a IP for building scalable neoverse CPU cores, uh, focusing on efficiency. The, the, uh, the intent is to provide the best dollar per throughput in the industry. And you can see that now with uh, the choice of uh, solutions available with the different cloud service providers and partners we're working with. A diversity in a range of platforms available for, for companies to, uh, to deploy and offering a, a widest choice possible of platforms that uh, software developers and company can use, and a focus on performance and optimization, uh, optimizing optimizing uh, workloads, making use of uh, of all the instructions available as part of the infrastructure, the architecture, to uh, to to optimize the performance. We've been collaborating with the uh, software community and the uh, the uh, ecosystem. Uh, we're involved as ARM. Um, uh, in, in over 100 of open source projects where we are contributing uh, architecture support, making sure these projects build natively on ARM and making sure we contribute latest optimizations to make use of latest instruction available as part of the ARM uh, latest platforms and architecture. 
so they can uh, they can be optimized. We are we are collaborating with uh, independent software vendors, including Suzy, to make sure there is a, a good choice of commercial solutions which are supported uh, in the industry. And we have an increasing number of, of Docker Hub images available and, and a large number of uh, CI CD builds which are being run on ARM based platforms. To, uh, to enable our collaboration in the telecom space, we launched uh, the ARM 5G Solution Lab uh, a couple of years ago. Uh, the lab has been designed to foster collaboration and innovation across the ecosystem. So it's to provide an easy remote access to ARM uh, intellectual property, partner hardware and software platforms. Uh, the lab is to, uh, to enable end-to-end -end solution integration, to build proof of concept and do some benchmarking against those solutions so that to provide access to blueprints for operator use cases and deployment. And that concludes my uh, my right. talk uh, today. Uh, you you have additional talks and presentations available at, as part of Susecon, talking about uh, our own ARM internal deployment as well, as well as uh, some of the work we've done with the community. Please do check these out, and, and um, I hope you you are having a good a good conference and uh, looking forward to uh, engaging with you. Thank you.